and kia ora. This is the Anzac Gamer, also known as Angelite85, and welcome back to the Anzac Gaming Channel. Come, sit down and have a beer with me. This video has been brought on by a, another YouTuber by the name of Rags. His channel's down in the description below. Highly recommend to check him out. Um, he basically, what he does is, amongst other things, like it's not just, this is it's not all he does on this channel, um, is basically finds, you know, like JTEC TV, new gamer, new tube, okay, I don't know what the fuck his name is, uh, crap game reviews or some sh crap, crap gamer, anyway, and, and takes these fanboys who think that console gaming is better than PC, where, and points out things that are completely and utterly untrue, uh, using misinformation and blatantly lying about certain aspects of PC gaming, and be it from just due to ignorance, the fact that they've got no freaking clue, or or what have you. So, highly recommend you check his channel out and uh, have a look at what he does. He's very entertaining. I do recommend that you need to put a bit of time aside. Uh, he has a tendency to make fairly long videos. Um, I'm going to attempt to try and keep mine as short and sweet as possible. So, uh, basically my video is going to be a little bit different, um, considering that I actually come from a background of 27 years of gaming on various platforms from uh, computers like the Commodore 64, uh, uh, 386, 486 computers, uh, Pentium 166s and Pentium 3 computers and well just PCs in general and Nintendos and Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, uh, Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive, Sega, uh, various handhelds like the Game Boys, um, PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 and I had and PlayStation, the PlayStation and the Xbox original, so the original Xbox, so the original Xbox One, I guess you could call it, I don't know. But the PlayStation 2 was actually the last console. Actually, no, the Wii was the last console I ever owned. But the PlayStation 2 was the last real console I ever owned. Um, so I have got extensive background on this. So I kind of do know what I'm talking about. And considering I work within the sales industry as well. So I actually have to know technical specifications of the consoles and what they're actually capable of and what they're not capable of. So, I'm going to focus on the way that I'm going to do this is that they are going to be just the strengths of the system. I'm going to go into the negatives. Some of it may be, some of it may come off a, as a negative. Like I may, as I delve into something, it may end up being a bit negative. But I will try and stay on the positive side of things and focus on the strengths of uh, the, plat the two platforms um, but at the end of the day I am a PC gamer because the I get to do stuff that I can't do on a console that I get to do things on my PC that I can't do on a console um, so you know so let's get straight into it I'm going to start with the consoles because their strengths are the, the list of strengths for them are actually a bit shorter. So there's the backhanded negativity. I do apologise, I was trying to be this thing, but the list is shorter on consoles for their strengths. Um, so let's start out. The simplicity. Now, the simplicity side of this is a very blanket term, but we'll try and keep it... Um, I, I will try and break out what it is in there, but straight up simplicity um, basically you will do all your research hopefully on the two different consoles you will, might ask friends on what they have or what they're planning on having when they do a new generation which you know that's I could go into that part of it but that's for I'll, I'll do that in a different video but you know based on your budget based on as I said your circle of friends what they have what they're playing that sort of thing. What library is available? You know, what games 
does one console have that you want to play versus another console? It's the, you know, what is it? Um, but, you know, you'll buy it. You'll get the console and you'll take it home. You'll unpack it. You'll unplug it. But, sorry, not unplug it. You'll unpack it. You'll just plug it in. Power, HDMI cable, uh, controller if it's a cable controller, or just to charge the controller up, maybe, I don't know, if it's a wireless one. You know, um, connect it to the internet, plug in your bits and pieces, throw your game in. Uh, admittedly, now you have to throw your game in, install, updates, uh, stuff like that. Um, which I think is a little bit rude. Uh, a mate of mine told me that the latest expansion for Destiny, 13 gig, and it took two and a half hours. Now, he's got a similar connection speed to me. And 13 gig does not take two and a half hours. Uh, Battlefield 1 beta was about that size and it took me 20 minutes to download and install. I honestly don't think that is very fair, you guys. I do not think that's fair. Why Why is it that the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One have these painfully long download and installation times? It's crazy. Anyway. So, off you go. You know, turn it on, bang, disc in. Grab a drink, grab some snacks, chill out on the couch with your controller and game to your heart's content. Go for it. It's fantastic. So, from simplicity, let's go to ease of use. They're easy. They're easy to use. They're very, very easy to use. It's not to say that computers aren't easy to use, but these guys take that ease of use to a whole nother level. Um... The very simple things that are, you know they they don't have much going on in them. They don't need much going on them. They're only meant to do three or four different things. They're not meant to do a whole plethora of things like a PC. Um, and that what they do is they do okay. That's fine. Easy use. So that's that's another strength to the console. Um, they have a small footprint. They don't stick out like a sore thumb. But I mean. I'll come to that part later, but that, that's not to say that you can't get PCs of a similar small compact footprint as well. Um, I mean, admittedly, the big thing that you can see here, this thing here, is a really large tower, but it does, it, it was built with my two hands, and I it's my pride and joy after my girlfriend and our daughter. Um, this is my baby. Um, still going strong after five years and it's got another three or four left in it so you know I don't have to worry about a scratch build or anything for another three or four years but you know small footprint they have a small footprint they look like they belong under an in, uh, in an entertainment unit under a TV around a TV they belong there they look like they belong there um, they're portable and and that you can they're easy to unplug and plug back in and take away and move around they're like not cumbersome like my big desktop is but that's not to say that you can't get a laptop but you know as I said your circle of friends you can unplug it from TV and take it away off you go have fun and then price now this one I could be rags would probably crucify me on but I'm going to explain in Australia it is we get and in New Zealand because hence Anzac Gamer. Uh, in Australia and New Zealand, we absolutely get completely and utterly put over a barrel and and told to close our eyes because we're going to be in for a big surprise as they ram something up our rear ends. And it's the price of technology in general, but it's the te price of computer parts alone. And a lot of it can't become can't be brought down to exchange rates. It is, I, I a lot of that extra expense I have no idea it comes from. Uh, as a real good example is uh, a GTX 1080 graphics card. Um, I can pick up from Amazon for about I think seven or eight hundred dollars Australian after exchange rate. Whereas if I go to local shops and shop locally within Australia I'm probably looking at $1,200 for the same card so 
that's so it's not as simple as exchange rate. Even if I put the um, GST, so our ten percent tax, onto that, it would still only come to about seven eighty eight. Uh, seven 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 hundred and seventy dollars to eight hundred and eighty dollars it still doesn't add up to twelve hundred bucks so it's <laughs> we get screwed over so to build a console killer pc it is about three or four times the cost of a playstation 4 or an xbox one which i know that i can go and pick up a 500 gig xbox one uh release xbox one so not the xbox one s for 328 bucks so uh price into entry of a pc versus uh, and, and i mean i've sat down and i've done a scratch build as cheap as i possibly can and i cannot break uh un break less than a thousand bucks i could probably save a bit by um using much cheaper and lower grade parts but then there's no guarantee those parts are going to last and eliminating a monitor and just using a television that you already would have and just running a hdmi cable so i you know it's hard to you know so just on price for us here in australia and new zealand the consoles have that as a fairly large strength um the bang for buck deal though still on pc it, for the dollar value at the PC, you know, the, the price burst of performance the PC has it. But for actual entry, uh, price into entry of the of the system, an Xbox One and a PlayStation 4 have just got a cheap, cheap, cheap entry into the market, uh, into gaming. That, that's it. So we have, on consoles, we have simplicity, we have ease of use, small footprint, plug and play ability, Portability and price. Bear in mind that last one is just for our region. That is just for us here in, uh, in Australia and New Zealand. That's the that's where the price is a strength. Now for the PC, raw processing power. With that raw processing power, games feel better. They feel better. They play better. If they and you might be thinking oh now you're just talking about graphics and stuff I'm talking about their frame rates playing a game like Battlefield 4 at 30 frames is unplayable I honestly do not know how anybody does that seriously I don't know I've played it at 30 frames and it just feels like crap there are the exceptions to that rule GTA 5 was actually a fantastic experience under 30 frames it didn't feel like a, it was a smooth 30 frames it was a smooth 30 frame experience um, but once I put a new GPU on this on, on my computer I had uh, I ramped that sucker up to the highest setting in graphics and I'm getting a solid 80 frames and it just felt that much better so the raw processing power just means that they can they game better they, they the games feel better the gaming itself just is a much better experience on a PC just the overall experiences of the game is better on the PC I mean yeah you could be somebody that doesn't like I don't care about graphics I don't care about but you should care about the experience when you experience a game on a PC versus its console counterpart the experience is better the more immersive everything just feels better so when you say I don't care about that stuff you should because here we are as PC gamers, we're sitting back going, that game is so much better on the PC. And we're not saying it to be condescending pricks. We're saying, come on, stop settling for shit. You know, the game, you know, if you really love that game, play it at its best. Play it the way it actually meant to, it is meant to be played on PC. I'm not saying that it's meant to be played on PC, but play it in the way that it should be played at its absolute best. Because playing it on a console, you might as well be playing the game at its worst. And that's a shame, because a lot of these games are very artistic expressions and they're very nice um, things. And, it, and it's very good that they've stepped up the game with the PlayStation Pro and, and the Scorpio when it comes out at the end of the year. But at the end of the day, these games... You can play now these ones that are have been ported across to PC, and I'll tell you what GTA 5 
absolutely probably the best PC port I have seen in a long, 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 long time. Um, just absolutely, it, Rockstar really stepped it up. They really did. But anyway, so straight away, raw processing power, multifunction capability. They're not a game like I'm. I mean, admittedly, my system is a gaming system, but right now I am recording this video. Um, I've recorded the gameplay. I'm recording audio right now. I can. I've currently got the points that I've got up on screen, so I actually have a structure to what I'm doing in this video. I have a ton of stuff going on, and the system isn't even breaking a sweat. If I, I could be playing a game right now while doing all of this, and the game, the system would still be barely breaking a sweat. It's a, it, it is in everything. It's my gaming system. It's my businessy side of things. It's my workstation. It's it's everything. It's my media server. It it's the lot. So you know, so the multifunction capability is a major strength for PCs. And a lot of people go, oh, they don't do, they do a whole bunch of things, which means that they don't do a whole bunch of things well. It's like actually no, they do those whole bunch of things greatly. Depending on the pro, <laughs> back to the raw processing power. The more power you have, the more ability it has, and uh, better capability it has down the line. So you can you know. There's that. They come. The next strength for PCs is that they come in many different form factors. They come in a home theater PC style thing, which is a little box, maybe two Xbox Ones high, and they would still and and look great and would fit under your entertainment unit and your TV, HDMI cable up, can throw and you could game on that if you wanted to. You could put a controller on that and chill back on your couch with this, you know, with this home theater PC driving everything for you. Um, you know, you've got your laptops, you've got your two-in-ones, you've got your ultra books, your net books, your desktops, your mini desktops, your little, 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 you've got your Raspberry Pis. They come in many different form factors. You're not limited to one style. So, you know, you've got that. Uh, and within that, you have customization options, which is the next strength. You can personalize the absolute shit out of these things. From anything from the, as simple as the wallpaper that you have when you log into your system to the operating system that you're actually using, be it Windows, Mac OS X, or Linux, the components that you have installed in the system, whether or not you have a Blu-ray drive or an Ultra HD Blu-ray drive or no drive at all, you know, you can, whether you have, like me, a dual monitor setup or you have a triple monitor setup or a, or a six monitor setup or a full wall projector plugged into it, whatever, you have a ton of customization options. Whether the case is a one-of-a-kind, custom-built one that you've done yourself is a thing. I mean, I've seen people make Star Destroyer cases that actually have things that happen. I've seen uh, wall-mounted, exploded, fully water-cooled systems that look really, really cool with all these glow wire and everything going on, the lights and every all that. Um, my dream is to build a steampunk style desk with the whole computer and everything in the desk and when you turn it on pumps and steam starts coming out just like as if I was turning it steampunk um, with copper tubing and, and all that all over and it look I think it would look really cool and when you turn it on the screens come up out of the desk you know just the customization options alone are staggering with what you can do with a PC you know, so that's the thing. Then the next strength is is many different control schemes. Right now, I have my keyboard and mouse, which is standard fare, and then I have a joystick just in the corner. You know, just a, 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 a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. I use that when I'm playing Elite Dangerous or a flight sim. But I could use a controller if I wanted to. I could use, and I could use any variation of the controller. I could use an Xbox One, I could use a PlayStation. In fact, if I really wanted to, I could go out and I can get the PlayStation Bluetooth dongle and actually get a DualShock 4 controller and run a DS4 Windows 10 or something. Or DS, uh, DualShock 4 for Windows 10 uh, app, app thing program to make the controller actually work with the system really well. Again, description to the article down below. It's a PC Gamer article that's there. It'll be in the description below. Have a look, check it out. But I have many different control schemes to work with. You know, joystick, joypad, uh, steering wheel. Admittedly, joypad and steering wheel can 
that's available for console, but you know, joystick. Um, if you're using VR, you've got the, the touch controls of the HTC Vive, the touch controls coming, hand control touch things for the VR uh, Oculus Rift when it comes. There's tons of them. Absolute boatloads of the control schemes. And lastly, is games library. Now, arguably, we have the greatest games ever made available to us. Regardless of year that they were made, we have access to them, we can play them. And that, so we can, I mean, I've got uh, Monkey Island, that's a game from my childhood. That one I played on an old window on a 486 back on CD ROM. And, and that was in 1994, I think. So that was 1994. Might have been earlier. So I had that. And, and we had Loom. I can play both those games today. On my computer today. On this one. This Windows 10 based system. I can play those games. I can play games like I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. I can play Phantasmagoria. I can play Sanitarium. I can play... Uh, theme Hospital. These games are going all the way back and all the way forward. I can come and play. I can play Battlefield One, obviously. I can play Battlefield Four, Battlefield Three, Battlefield 1942. If I want to go back to the very first computer that I actually had to mess with because I had a graphical glitch in Battlefield 1942, I had to replace the graphics card in that system so that I could play Battlefield 1942 properly. And it was as simple as just changing up from the TNT2 card that I had to a GeForce MX440. My very first ever parts replacement on a system. And I was hooked. Um, so there, there's all that. You know, and, and just recently, we have, and you know, and then I can talk about the emulators. So, so, you know, we've got emulators for arcade games. We've got emulators for Nintendo. We've got emulators for the handhelds. Emulators for Sega. PlayStation 1. PlayStation 2. I haven't actually had a look, but there's probably an emulator out there for the original Xbox. There's even now a service that's just come online called PlayStation Now. And it's basically Netflix for PlayStation games. And you just stream them to your computer and you can chill and play PlayStation 3 games. And PlayStation 1, I believe, is on there. And they're bringing on PlayStation 2. So, you know, there's... You know, that... We have the largest gaming library available in the world. To, to you know, whatever. Um, we have multiple services that give us access to these games. We have Steam. We have GOG. We have uh, Humble Bundle when they come up. We have... Uh, Origin, which is EA's one, and EA is just throwing old games at us for nothing. Okay, here. So I've got games like Nox, Jade Empire, um, Wing Commander 3, uh, as mentioned, Theme Hospital. Um, uh, got Need for Speed, which was the newest one. A newer Need for Speed. Uh, I think it was Most Wanted. I don't know, I can't remember what it was. Anyway, um, you know, they're throwing free games at us. Ubisoft are celebrating an anniversary. And they're throwing free games at us of their old thing, like Prince of Persia and, and, and Splinter Cell. So, you know, we have all these services. We have multiple services. And, and then we have access to multiple storefronts. So things like CD Key Warehouse, CDJS Keys, or CJS Keys. Uh, G2A, which I tend to myself personally stay away from. But that's my own personal reasons why I stay away from that one um, stuff like that so we have access to all of this so you know so at, at the end of the day I don't care what you game on if you want to game on an Xbox one and that's your choice game on the Xbox one go hard my friend you want to play on this PlayStation 4 same thing go hard mate or go home it, you know if you're not if you, you know, but the thing that I have an issue with is when you, as a console person, come to me and tell me that your system, based on fact, your fact, your opinion, is better than PC. It's just plain wrong. It's not. They both have their strengths, and they both have their weaknesses. 
But when you break it down like I have, consoles have very few strengths these days. That simplicity side of thing is slipping away so much so that they are virtually computers. And, and as I said, there is actually another video coming where I'm going to basically blow the lid off. I could say I'm going to blow the lid off something, but basically I'm going to tell you how I see things going in the console market because there are changes coming my friends and you're not going to probably like them I'm going to tell you that now there are changes are coming and you probably ain't going to like them um, but don't come into my house into Rag's house into, into the PC gaming house and say that your system is superior to ours because that's just not true on a technical aspect on an overall aspect PC gaming is superior to consoles in every facet of the word they are superior they are technologically superior they perform better they are multifunctionally better they do more than what a console does they have much more customization than a console does so you know that's where rags and people like rags and myself start taking issue is when we have console fanboys come into our house and just spew a whole bunch of bullshit all over the place because then we've got to clean it up and then tell you to go away if you came in and you said hey i've been really enjoying this game it's a really cool game and you talked about us on gaming we will go yeah cool mate that's great I wish we could, I wish I could play it, but unfortunately, I don't own that platform. I have a PC. And you go, oh, well, that, and then your response is go, oh, well, you, you don't know what you're missing. You really don't know what you're missing. That's it. That, you don't go any further. Don't try and say that you're, oh, well, you should really get a console. The consoles are way better than a PC. Because, it, it, you know, we're going to tell you to go away. We really are. Now, one, one of the strengths I did leave out, and that was mods. If I was to say it's a strength against the PlayStation 4, yes, definitely mods on PC, but Xbox One now have mods, which is fantastic. It's great. Freaking progress at last, you console guys. You have mods. Congratulations. I hope you're enjoying them. I hope you're installing the hell out of them and having fun. I really do. Um, and I feel so sorry. And to you PlayStation 4 guys, I am so, so sorry. You're missing out. I, I really am, Sony with on track. I just really wish Sony got on board. And I'm, I, I truly am sorry that you're missing out on this. On, on, these, on these wonderful fan-made mods. With people that love the game as much as you. Producing this stuff. And, and enjoying the con... You know, just showing how much they love the game. And sharing that with everybody else. Because that's what the mods are all about. People loving the game so much that they feel that there's something missing. And they just go ahead and they add it in and then share that with everybody else. But anyway, so to summarize, consoles, strengths, simplicity, ease of use, small footprint, plug and play ability, and if you live in a place like us here in Australia and New Zealand, price. PC, raw processing power, multifunction capability, many different form factors, uh, ease of use compared to what they used to be. Customization options, many control schemes, games library, backwards compatible, or just games library just basically covers off all the, that stuff. Um, mods, uh, multiple services, open platform. Yeah. But anyway, I've been the Anzac Gamer, also known as Angel885. I hope you enjoyed what I've just put down here. Highly recommend, don't forget to check out Rag's channel in the description below. And I will catch you all in the next video. Cheers.